You said that you've contacted the Prime Minister today. Is that in writing? Uh, no, I've, I said I was making it clear to the Prime Minister today. I, I, I don't know whether he'll be watching or not, but if he is, I make it clear again, uh, Prime Minister. I stand ready to negotiate a Section 30 order. Uh, if you decide uh, that you now are a Democrat, I have to say the evidence of that up to date is not promising. Uh, but I'll set out what we do in those uh, circumstances if he continues to deny democracy uh, very soon. So you haven't yet asked for the Section 30 order officially, but two Prime Ministers now, <laughs> Boris Johnson, Theresa May before him, have rejected that. What's going to change there? Well, I've set out today what's going to change is I will set out a lawful way forward uh, without a Section 30 is if that is what is required. Uh, the other thing that I think is pertinent here is that we have a UK government, and certainly on this issue, this applied to Theresa May, but on this and many other issues, this certainly applies to Boris Johnson, a UK government that does not respect democracy and, and does not respect the rule of law. We saw that very powerfully uh, as recently as yesterday. And ultimately, while I think it would be better for the people of Scotland and the people of the UK if we had two governments able to sit down on that democratic basis and agree that we disagree on the uh, substance of independence, but agree the process by which the people of Scotland would decide, that would be far better. But I do believe that the problem of having a democracy denying uh, UK government and Prime Minister ultimately is their problem much more than it is mine because it actually becomes one of the powerful arguments for Scotland becoming an independent country where democracy and the rule of law uh, are against the fundamental principles that underpin everything that we do.